Let's learn a little bit about U functions. I've set up a basic demo where I can control a pawn and move it around. So there's a child pawn that inherits from this parent pawn. At the end of the day, this is just C++. So we can define regular C++ functions and use those. But Unreal also gives us the ability to mark up functions with the U function. So by marking this U function, we actually expose this function to the reflection system. So we can query what functions a class might have at runtime via the reflection system. So let's take a look at that and we can play. So let's grab the class object. And we can ask the class what type of functions and properties it has. But we need to use the name of the function, so I'm just going to copy and paste it. So the regular CPP function is just plain old C++. It is not exposed to reflection system, so it actually should fail to find this, but let's do it for comparison's sake. Now let's copy and paste this for the U function. So if I copy the U function's name, we should be able to log it and see which ones we find. So let's compile this. Make sure to save all the files. So I'll drop a breakpoint here and we can step through the code when I begin play. All right, so we've hit the breakpoint. We can see that the debugger found the class, the U class. And so now we're going to ask the U class for the regular C++ function. And you can see we stepped over this. So we were not able to find the regular function via reflection. However, if we ask it for the my U function, which is a U function, we should find it. And there you can see we actually did find it. We stepped in. So just adding U function does expose the functions to the reflection system. So that might not seem that useful, but it does let you do certain things. For example, we can type ke star, paste the function name. If I drop a breakpoint inside of the function, you can see we tripped a breakpoint for the myu function. So just by exposing it to reflection, we can treat this as like a debug function or something. If we try the same for the C++ function, it obviously doesn't work because it's not part of the reflection system. So one of the things you'll do more often is actually define a U function that is blueprint callable. What this lets you do is in blueprint call this function. So if we compile this, I can open up the pawn and call it the function. So blueprint callable function. So now we've exposed this to blueprint. Similarly, there is a different type of callable function. So U function blueprint pure. And for blueprint pures, we need a return type. So blueprint pure nodes do not have any side effects on the class. That is, they're like pure math nodes. However, they are reevaluated every time they're used. So let's compile that and see what this looks like. So if we call my blueprint pure, you can see that it looks a little bit different. The Regular Blueprint Cobble has an input and output pin, but Blueprint Pures do not. The main difference, in my opinion, is that this will only execute one time, but for every pin that this goes into, it'll re-execute instead of sharing the return value. So that means Blueprint Pures can be rather expensive. So you would think that plugging these two in you know, the value isn't going to change because it's a const blueprint pure function that it would only need to evaluate these pins once, but it will actually call this function once for this and it would call it again for this. Whereas if this had an output and we plugged it into both, it would only call this one time when the execution pins reach it. So there are quite a few points of confusion when first learning new functions. Let's clear most of those up with a single example. What I'm going to do is create a blueprint callable function and add a lot of parameters and output parameters. So I've defined this function, let's give it some parameters. We can do pass by value. We can do by mutable references. So mutable references are actually viewed as output parameters. 
if you actually want a mutable reference as an input parameter, what you have to do is do uparam ref, and then we can do n32 reference. We can also do constant references. Now, this function is also returning a float, so we can actually name that float by doing uparam display name, and we'll give it a blueprint friendly name. And so if we give this a body, let's compile this and see what it looks like in the editor. So the name of it was not overwritable. And we can see that there's actually two return types. If we look at the C++ signature, we are just returning a float. But here we are returning a float, the my return float, which is what we defined as the name using the uparam display name. But we're also returning the mute ref. And so that is this thing. But notice this was also a mutable reference. And in this case, because it is prefixed with the uparam ref, it makes it as an input parameter to this node instead of an output parameter. Notice that the const ref is also an input parameter. So the only difference between the const ref and the mute ref is the presence of the const keyword, which is enough for Unreal's editor to determine this to be an input parameter instead of being an output parameter. The pass by value also has a subtle implication. By value, notice you can type a value here, but the const ref you cannot. So sometimes when you want a node to be directly typed into, you can specify the input as being by value instead of being by const ref. Notice also that while this is virtual and can be overridden by code, it cannot be overridden by blueprint. So if we go to the functions override, not overridable. In order to override this function, we would need to make it a blueprint native event, which requires it not be virtual. We'll get to that in a moment. But just so you can see it, this is overridable via code. So we've overridden this, and we can see it execute. So we've hit the breakpoint, and if I continue, we can see that the child has overridden the virtual function and is correctly executing it. Before we can get to how to override these in Blueprint, we need to explain some other concepts. The first thing is Blueprint implementable events. Blueprint implementable events allow you to create a code function that when you call to it, a child Blueprint can respond to it and do some behavior. Blueprint implemental events do not have any code associated with them on the code side, they're just for calling. So we might would call that in code, like for example, in begin play. And this would eventually execute some Blueprint code if they've ever written the event. So let's compile and see what that does. So here we can call the Blueprint implemental event no code. And we could print a string or something here to prove that it works. You can see the string printed. So that was executed from code. The next thing is Blueprint native events. Blueprint native events can have code in C++. And when you implement the function body in the CPP file, you need to add this underscore implementation to the function name, because Unreal is going to set up some intermediate code to call this. So here we call the blueprint native event. So overriding this means we're not going to execute the code on the C++ side. So if we were to print string, this would not execute any C++ code. If we wanted to execute the C++ code and do this, we can right click on the function and do add call to parent function. And so in this way, we're kind of overriding the function. So if we make a call to the BP native event in our begin play, compile that. And let's drop a breakpoint in our function that is the code side of the function. And let's put a breakpoint in the blueprint side. And if I play, we have the code side first, because this is where we're calling the parent function. And in blueprint, we hit the blueprint print string. And so in that way, you can kind of override functions. Note that also the underscore implementation is a function generated for you, and it's a virtual function. So in your child classes, you can override that and have even more overridden behavior in code. So if we draw a breakpoint there, 
compile this. Actually, we need to fix our compile errors by saving both files. And also, I want to call the super so I can see that both execute. I'll put a breakpoint right there, compile that. Okay, so now we have the blueprint overriding the event, and we have a code class that is a child class also overriding the virtual, and then we have the base virtual in the parent class. So we should hit all three of these. So I've got a breakpoint here, and we have breakpoints in code here and here. So let's play and watch it hit all of them. So we've hit the child in code, which is going to call it super, and then we will hit the print for the blueprint child. And so that's how you override events in blueprint that are also overridable in code. But these events do not have return types. So what if you wanted to have a function that you could call in code and have blueprint return you a value? Well, you can do that also with blueprint native events. So in the code, we've got it returning zero by default. And in begin play, we'll just call that. But let's override this in blueprint. Actually, let's move this above and drop a breakpoint, compile it. And then in blueprint, we can go to the functions, override. And we can see override will return in blueprint. And instead of returning that, let's return 100. And let's compile that, save it. So let's print the value. So compile that and test it. All right, so make sure you include the Kismet system library. And now we can drop a breakpoint here and live code that. So we've overridden it and we return 100. We can drop a breakpoint on it too and play. So now we have this overridable return in Blueprint. We step down, we hit the breakpoint, which is going to return 100 instead of zero. And we can see the value is 100. And so that is how you can have blueprints return values to code. We will continue looking more U functions and further videos.